Uh, Tillman, uh, let's start off here. I do want to start off in the restaurant space here. That's what a lot of people know you for here. That empire has been expanding, but there's been a lot of questions, a lot of concerns here about how much is expansion is left in that tank. Well, from a restaurant standpoint, you know, we, our population continues to grow and restaurants close and new restaurants open up. And, and as you watched it for the last 30 years, the people that change, change, change and change with what the consumer wants are going to be successful. And the people that don't change are going to close. And you always have enough people that don't change. So you don't ever have to worry about being overpopulated with restaurants. Uh, cer certainly not. Uh, when it comes to demand, there's the demand side of it, but there's also sort of your own inputs here, labor costs and food costs and things like that. Things that got disrupted during the pandemic, are they back to normal, Tillman? Well, they're, they're back to normal, but your, your cost is so much more today. And people try to understand, well, why does it cost so much to eat out today? What they don't understand is that our food cost is 20% more than it was five years ago, and our labor cost is 20 to 25% more than it was. And that's why you pay, that you paid $30 for something, you pay $40 for it today, is to make up for that. And that's the way the supply chain is from a people standpoint and a cost standpoint. It's electricity, it's, it's labor, it's occupancy, it's all the above, and that's just the new cost in America. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everybody makes a lot more money today than they did five years ago. Well, what does this mean for how consumers are spending? When you look at kind of the luxury high end, we're hearing a lot of anecdotal evidence about the sticky spending you're seeing, particularly on restaurants and travel, but do you see a bifurcation on Americans who may feel a lot more stung by the weight of inflation today? 100%, okay? Like, let me give you an example. 21 and 22 were the greatest years that everybody had in high-end retail, high-end restaurants, casinos, okay? In 23, without all that government trillions of dollars out there uh, with that same consumer, you've gone back to a normality to your high-end restaurants. Now, your, ca your, your lower casual in dining, you know, say my rainforest, Bubba Gump, Saltgrass Steakhouse, even your chart houses and, and those type of uh, concepts, but your catch, your Mastro's, your Martin's, uh, your Del Frisco's, your high-end steakhouses, uh, are not doing the business that they were doing in 21 and 22. We're more back to the 19 levels and, and the early, early 20 levels. When we think about how people are changing the way they spend, let's move from restaurants to gaming for a second here. You have Caesars coming out, really disappointing investors here on the, the Vegas numbers that they're putting out there, but really highlighting digital, a lot of talk about online gaming, DraftKings after the Super Bowl, of which, of course, you have a large stake after that Golden Nugget deal. How do you think about how consumers are going to be spending on gaming and betting moving forward after this pandemic era? Well, I think they're gonna continue enjoying it and everybody loves the entertainment of gaming. The, the national gaming numbers were like 62 billion for gaming companies last year, which is huge. But, but you've gotta remember, okay, we, we all in 21 and 22, be, because our margins were so high, because we couldn't get employees, and, and, and also there was so much extra money out there, we all had monstrous numbers. And it started to come down a little bit in 23, and, and it's, it's all this regional gaming is, is, it's not gonna be what it was in 21 and 22. And that's why it's starting to slowly come down to a normality. But at the same time, we're all doing a lot more than we did in 19 and, and of course, 20. Let's not even talk about 20. It's a year that didn't exist. Yeah. But uh, you're not going to do 21 and 22 numbers anymore. Uh, you're just, it's not going to happen. And so when people say, oh, my gosh, Caesars, you know, isn't doing that, no, those numbers in their regional casinos, compare them to 19. Do not compare them to 21 and 22. Yeah. Don't compare any company when it comes to the consumer of what their 21 and 22 numbers were. Or you're making a mistake and you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, I think a lot of investors have already picked up on that. Tillman, I do want to pivot to sports. And I, I once again want to offer our apologies uh, to you, uh, uh, obviously, 
owner of the Houston Rockets. Uh, you have a, obviously, uh, yeah, and we can laugh too. I mean, I was just watching the All Star game, and there's been a lot of talk about the new NBA contract. There's been a lot of talk about the decline of regional sports networks, and I'm just wondering where you see the revenue streams for sports coming from longer term here. What do those contracts start to look like? Well, I, I, you know, the players uh, and 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 the owners are in the same boat. Okay. Uh, we're partners. They get X amount of our our basketball revenue and our revenue related to, to to basketball and anything to do with it. And so we're all in this together. And and if we do want to continue to grow the value of these teams, we, we've got to figure out television and streaming. Uh, but at the same time, all these companies that televise us have a right to make money also. Yeah. And so I understand what what Fox and ESPN uh, and Discovery are doing, but uh, in trying to shut everybody else out and 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 trying to make it work for all of us and yeah. themselves. And so I'm very sympathetic, but I don't I don't think I know where it's going. I don't think anybody knows where it's going. But when the NFL contracts are up in in 30 with the networks, things are going to definitely change. Right. Uh, because well, but I can tell you this: people want to watch games on television. They do not want to watch them on their phone. I'll, okay. Uh, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll push back on that, Tillman. I mean, we've seen a lot of folks, particularly younger generations, that are much more comfortable watching it on you know their mobile devices rather than on the couch in front of the actual tel TV that maybe some of us are used to here. I mean, how do you adapt? for a world where you are going to have just a much larger percent of the population that, let's just say, wants an alternative? Well, let's say this. You could still stream it to your TV. But but I know I, when I have to watch a game on my phone and when my kids who are very into the Rockets <laughs> are watching it, they, we want to watch it on a big screen TV. Now, I can't tell you, but I know our group of friends, they're young friends, but I guess we're going to do what we have to do, but I still don't ever see those big televisions in all of our homes mm -hmm. and businesses going empty. Okay, that's right. why bars, restaurants, everybody have big TVs in their establishments today because sports is religion. And the one thing that we all have in common is watching our sports teams. Do, do you think, though, that the cable networks and the big networks will at least give a little on that when you guys go into negotiations? Because it's going to be a topic that comes up whether uh, whether people really want it or not. There has to be some component where there's a balance between those two. And I'm wondering how much give do you think you're going to see there? I think there's going to definitely be give, but also think you're going to always have the ability to stream it on your TV. And it's it's amazing, gotcha. you know, that when when you had Netflix and everybody, and then all of a sudden now the TVs come out and you can get it right off of your TV that you don't even need the box. Okay, so new technology is going to keep up with whatever the companies need to do to be successful, and it's going to become part of our everyday life. But when you start talking about what's happening now with the streaming, we will adjust to it and we will adapt to it. But let's all be honest, it was much more difficult to watch an NFL game this year when you were used to on DirecTV when you had the, the, the uh, NFL ticket just to go into another channel instead of having to go to a whole other system in YouTube this year. So we all had to learn a lesson this year that it wasn't quite as easy.